Good day. Ever wondered how those giant towers managed to hold up massive power lines across long distances? Today, we're diving into the world of electrical pilots, exploring their design, stability, and the forces they have. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain techniques engineers use to stiffen electrical pilots. These techniques include internal cross bracing and triangulation. Big words which you will understand today. Pylons, by definition, are huge structures that support heavy objects, and they do this over great distances. Pylons are not only about electricity, although they are often seen as steel towers that hold overhead power lines. Pylons can also refer to columns that support bridges, buildings, or monuments. An example includes the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, USA, which is a suspension bridge. It has two main pylons that are 227 meters high and support the main cables that carry the weight of the bridge deck. Electrical pylons are structures that support overhead power lines, helping to transmit electricity over long distances. Electric pylons are like cell phone towers with a broad base and narrow top. These pylons come in various designs, showcasing the creativity and effectiveness in solving the same problem. Electricity passes through a network of cables and wires. These cables and wires are called transmission lines. Transmission lines are carried across the country by pylons. Electric pylons benefit society by supporting an extensive network of cables and wires over great distances. This network is then used to carry electricity around the country. Pylons need to be very strong and stable constructions to be able to carry heavy power lines. These frame structures span vast distances. Their construction must make them able to withstand forces acting on them. Electrical pylons can have a negative impact on society and the environment. Firstly, Children are known to play on or near the structures and could fall and hurt themselves making them unsafe. Loose objects or members on the structure might fall on children and hurt them. There is also a belief that pylons can cause cancer. This have however not been proven through studies. People consider electrical pylons to be ugly, causing visual pollution. Visual impact refers to the visual influence an object has on its immediate surroundings. Would you live next to too many pylons? Look at the pictures of electrical pylons below. What do you notice? Yes, electrical pylons come in various shapes and sizes, but they all serve the same purpose. All designs support high voltage electrical cables, and all designs maintain stability. Different designs exhibit unique characteristics, such as height, shape, and materials. Despite their differences, they all achieve the same goal. This shows us that there's often more than one way to solve a problem in engineering. The variety allows engineers to choose the most suitable design based on factors like location, cost, and the amount of electricity being transmitted. Electric pylons have cross bracing as well as triangulations for stability, and to increase the load and forces which the structures can withstand. We'll now talk about these in more details. Internal cross bracing is when a structure is stiffened by members, or supporting beams, crossing one another forming an X shape. The members form a brace, which strengthens the structure. They're crucial for giving the pylon its stiffness, stability, and resistance to bending. Imagine a ladder, it's strong as long as its sides are connected by rungs, but without them, it easily collapses. Pylons work similarly, with the cross braces acting like rungs to prevent the structure from buckling under its own weight and the wind's force. Diagonal members within the pylon structure form X-shaped patterns reinforcing the frame against lateral forces like wind and ensuring the pylon remains upright and not falling over. Cross bracing not only stabilizes the structure but also increases the load a structure can support. Cross bracing is not only used on the sides of the structure but also inside the structure and this is called internal cross bracing. The cross bracing on the inside is highlighted in red, 
while the cross bracing on the outside is shown in dark blue. Each leg in an electrical pylon has a foundation foot. You then have horizontal beams around the pylon. Inside these horizontal beams, two members cross each other, this is internal cross bracing which strengthens the pylon. Triangulation is when triangular shapes are formed by members that are used to brace a structure. The triangles within the structure make it rigid and stiff improving load-bearing capacity. Triangles are stable shapes, distributing loads efficiently and minimizing deformation. Cross-bracing patterns can be reinforced further by additional struts that form triangular shapes. Pylons experience both tension and compression forces due to the weight of power lines and environmental conditions such as wind. Tension pulls the structure apart, while compression pushes it together. The diagonal beams are mainly under tension, holding the whole structure together like guy wires on a tent. Meanwhile, the vertical beams experience compression, carrying the weight of the cables and engineers carefully consider tension and compression in designing pilots. Understanding these forces helps engineers create designs that effectively counteract these stresses ensuring the pylon's strength and durability. That is all for today. Let's meet again for another exciting lesson.